Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, everyone. I'm Jumbo Commander, and this is titled Your Deck Tribal. Yeah. My deck is really a deck about your deck. Let's get into it. And the inspiration for this deck has to be Jace Cunning Castaway. Now, I don't really care about the text on this card. I care about a rule change that revolved around it. And that's this wonderful legendary type. See, before Planeswalkers were just Planeswalkers with the name. But then they added this legendary type to it. This means that you can have more than one Jace Planeswalker on the battlefield as long as they have different names. So Jace Cunning Castaway can also be on the battlefield with Jace the Mind Sculptor and Jace Architect of Thought. Just like other legendary creatures, if they have different names, they can be on the same battlefield. But having the word legendary on this Planeswalker's type line opens up a lot of different options. I think the one that everyone really focuses in on has got to be Captain Sisse, because now Captain Sisse can fetch up Planeswalkers out of your deck. Now that's really cool and powerful. So if you're looking to mess around with legendary cards, there's plenty of cool cards that now interact in interesting ways. Loyal Retainers, Thalia's Lancers, Yomiji, Reki, Willow Seder, Sabo Tavak, all of them are really interesting when dealing with legends. Now, some of them are specifically dealing with creatures. For example, Sabo Tavok says protection from legends, destroy target legend. And you're like, ooh, does that mean I get to destroy a planeswalker? No, it's a rotted to legendary creature. But notice how I said you could play every color. And there is a distinct card missing from this list of awesome legendary interactions. And that is my favorite. The focus of this deck tech, Empress Galena. Empress Galena is 3 blue blue for a 1-3 legendary merfolk, and for blue blue tap, you can gain control of target legend or legendary permanent. Now it's that legendary permanent that is so interesting because now Empress Galena steals all of your opponent's planeswalkers. Oh my gosh, do you have a friend that has a thousand dollar super friends deck? Uh, steal their planeswalkers. Have you ever seen the fear in someone's eyes when they don't want to tick their planeswalker close enough to the ultimate so you can't steal it and use it? That is the feeling that Empress Galena gives you. Now, there is a little bit of a push and pull when it comes to Empress Galena. We're not talking about a crazy competitive deck. This is a fun, janky, old school legend that steals your opponent's commanders. But unfortunately, she's like 25 bucks. So I've got like a sub general in here in the form of Memnarch. Now Memnarch has his own problems because everyone freaking hates Memnarch. <laughs> People really don't like him and you basically could go ultimate and then take everyone's everything. So people get really nervous around Memnarch, but the trade-off is, is that he's like four bucks. So we're gonna play slightly different packages if we have different commanders. Memnarch, like I said, goes really well with infinite mana, has some interesting artifact synergies, but I promised an old school general to Twitter. So let's take a look at Empress Kalina and how we can enable legend stealing. Like I mentioned before, Empress Kalina could be a metagame call if you're playing against an Atraxa Super Friends deck. If your opponents keep utilizing their commander over and over again if it's a key part of their strategy. Now there's a few cards that really enable Empress Galena, and the best one has got to be Leyline of Singularity, because it makes all non-land permanents legendary. That means Empress Galena can steal anything your opponents have. It's so cool. And it also has weird corner case areas too. Hunted Phantasm. You can play a three mana four six and your opponent only gets one goblin instead of five. I, I know that's a really corner case situation, but what it really does is it shuts down token decks. And that is much more useful. If they're blinking Avengers of Zendikar, you know, nope, your plant tokens are legendary. 
if they're using Reese the Redeem to double up their tokens. Nope, that doesn't work either. So Leyline of Singularity is kind of a difficult workaround, but a really fun and unique card. It also removes a lot of the downside from Curse of the Swine, leaving your opponents with only one pig, but a legendary pig. Very nice. It can also let you abuse cards like Arena of the Ancestors. All legends become tapped when Arena comes into play and legends do not untap as normal during the untap phase. Which you would think would be played more in Commander, but it's not. It's just an artifact that kind of taps down all the legends. I think that's kind of interesting. Not to mention Hero's Podium can just work with all of your creatures, which I also think is pretty cool. So with the Empress at the helm, we can't include all those other awesome cards in other colors, but there is a little bit of legendary synergy we can include. Honorworn Shaku can tap for one mana, and then you can tap an untapped legendary permanent you control and untap your artifact. Now this is another piece of great tech with your Planeswalkers, which are now legendary permanents. You can tap your legendary Planeswalker to untap Honor Worn Shaku, and a tapped Planeswalker is exactly the same as an untapped Planeswalker. It does nothing. Unless, I guess, you're a Gideon and you want to attack or a Sarkin. Never mind. It's basically nothing, okay? You can also use the Cloud Keeper to generate more mana for your legendary permanents, but we're in a format that runs Ancient Tomb. I mean, why do we want to mess around with this other land that's kind of expensive too. I also want to mention Minamo because this will let you untap your Empress and then tap it again to steal two things in a turn, but it seems like I've stumbled on to the real intent of this deck, and that's stealing things. I want, I want your cards, and I want them to be mine now. So let's talk about stealing other people's decks and playing with cards that aren't yours. First, we have Control Magic. Going all the way back to Alpha, it's the original steal effect, and it's real, real good. And so we have a lot of variations on it that never quite reach that mana cost, but they've broken it in different ways. Treachery is kind of for free because you can untap all your lands. That's insane. Vidalkin Shackles is reusable, and you plan on having a lot of islands in this deck. And one of my favorites, Corrupted Conscience. One thing I love is that your opponents are going to play big dumb cards, like Terastodon, okay? And you're going to Corrupted Conscience that, and then suddenly they're going to face down a 9-9 infecting creature. Uh, and it's their own fault, honestly. Like, you wouldn't have taken it unless they played some gigantic beater, right? So when you infect them to death, that's on them. I also like Lay Claim because, honestly, you don't always need to steal stuff, so the cycling is added benefit. But I don't just want to steal creatures, I want to have exciting steal effects. And that's why I want to include one of my favorite cards that I've honestly never played. It's so corner case, but so amazing. Grip of Phyresis. Two and a blue for an instant, and you gain control of target equipment, and then create a 0-0 black germ creature token and attach that equipment to it. So it lets you just steal an equipment and put it on a germ. I love it. I really want to just steal something awesome, a batter skull or a scythe claw. I don't know. I don't know what I want to steal, but I want to use this card because it's so sneaky. It's an instant. It can like take an equipment away and ambush someone. Oh, I think it's amazing. And I really like that feeling, the instant combat phase, I'm going to mess with you, be scared of me because I'm untapped and I'm in blue. And so I do want to embrace some of these instant speed control effects like Dominate, Ray of Command, oh, Domineering Will. You can play that on other people's turns with other creatures. It just messes with combat. And Reigns of Power, it just destroys combat, it blows it out of the water. And so all of these instant speed effects really lets you play with combat a lot. One thing you have to pay attention to is that Dominate does not untap the creature, but Ray of Command does. So Ray of Command lets you steal their creature and ambush it with another one of their creatures. Dominate, you gotta make sure they work around that. But as long as we're messing with our opponents stealing their stuff, let's steal one of their phases of their turn away. 
Fate Spinner is amazing, annoying, and really underplayed in Commander. You need to play this card. One blue blue for one two human wizard at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep that player chooses draw step, main phase, or combat phase. And then they skip what they choose. So they get two out of the three of those things. Now, have you ever known an opponent to say, no, I won't draw a card? Yeah, no. So they're going to draw their card, okay? Uh, and then they have this feeling like, well, what am I going to do? Most of the time, they just skip their combat phase. And every so often, they're like, no, you're getting attacked. And they either give up a card to do it, or they give up their main phase, which means they can't play any sorcery speed spells. And by the way, when do you play your land drops? Yeah, it's during your main phase. So they can't even put a land into play that turn. That's my favorite part. They're like, I'm going to attack you. I'm going to choose <laughs> to skip my main phase. And then they go to put a land on the battlefield and you're like, no, 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 you have no main phase. It crushes them and makes me so gleeful inside. And you know, Fate Spinner also has me thinking about other things that mess with the combat step, even though it's not really controlling their creatures, like Aether Spouts or Polymorphous Jest. I think I want to have like all the tricks so I can really mess with them during combat. But this isn't about just messing with them. I want to steal something from them. Let's just steal their whole turn with Mind Slaver. Mind Slaver lets you just take control of someone's turn and just mess with them. It's a really fun win condition in Commander. And Emrakul the Promised End does an imitation of that. It doesn't quite take their whole turn away, it gives them one afterwards. But you do end up with a 13-13 Flying Trample protection from instance, so that's pretty good. I also have to mention that Mind Slaver is much better because it's recurrable with Academy Ruins or other artifact shenanigans. You don't even exile Mind Slaver, you just keep using it as you get it back from your graveyard. Just broken. Here are a couple spells that just let you play your opponent's deck for them. Bribery, 5 mana for their best creature. Acquire, 5 mana for their best artifact. Soar of Temptation is a creature that steals one of their creatures. But that's kind of a boring effect. It's control magic, whatever. I'd prefer a much more corner case card like Aura Thief. Against the right deck, Aura Thief will steal so much cool stuff. Of course, against the wrong deck, it will be useless. <laughs> but it's that cool corner case that I really want to embrace. I want Aura Thief to be awesome. Also, Thada Adele is very, very good. Again, another underplayed card. It has Island Walk. Okay. Do you know how many people play with islands? A lot of people play with islands. So Thought Adel can easily hit your opponent, and when she does, you get to go searching for an artifact and exile it. And that turn, if you have the mana, you can cast it. So not only can you get rid of their key artifacts, you could also steal their soul ring, steal their mana crypt. If you have enough mana, you could steal something even bigger. Man, Thought Adel is criminally underplayed. Those are very active spells. Let's mention some reactive spells. Desertion, counter something, and then steals it if it's an artifact or creature. Spell Swindle, brand new. It counters a spell, but then kind of steals the mana for you to use on later turns. And of course, Mana Drain is just the older, much better brother of Spell Swindle. But Mana Drain's really expensive unless you wait and Iconic Masters makes Mana Drain cheaper. I don't know. We can hope, but I kind of think it'll do the Mana Crypt thing. It'll dip a little bit, but it won't disrupt the price too much, but you'll see it a lot more often in people's decks. There's a few other spells that are very reactive. Spelljack literally steals their spell for you to play at a later time. Insidious Will can sort of redirect their spell. I, do, I love Insidious Will, it's great. And then Commandeer, in a deck full of blue cards, you can just exile them and then commandeer someone's non-creature spell. But none of these are my favorite for stealing spells. My favorite card that steals spells is Perplexing Chimera. This is a complicated and amazing card. It's a 5 mana 3-3 three, three enchantment creature and it just sits on the battlefield. And whenever you want, you can be like, mm, I want that spell on the stack. And you just give them the Chimera and you get control of the spell. Now, that doesn't really matter if it's a uh, board wipe, because if you take control of it, your Chimera is going to die in the board wipe anyways. But targeted removal? Yeah, you can take that spell and redirect it at somewhere else. 
You can also play the interesting trick of Homeward Path to get your perplexing Chimera back so that you can steal the next spell again. I love this combo. And by the way, a Homeward Path might feel ridiculous in this deck because you're stealing all of their stuff, and it would be ridiculous to give back a creature you briberied from your opponent. But Homeward Path is kind of a big reset sometimes. Things might go bad when you're changing creatures and doing all sorts of weird stuff. And sometimes you could just be like, yep, everyone gets their stuff back. You know, I've talked a lot about stealing things, but only one thing. Let's go big. How about stealing something from all of your opponents with Expropriate or Blatant Thievery? Yeah, I know Expropriate can technically have you taking extra turns, but that's kind of like stealing a turn from an opponent, so I like it. You can also steal cards at random with Mind's Dilation, a very fun card that you should honestly pick up a copy and play in Commander because it's amazing. Seven mana is pretty steep, but whenever your opponent casts their first spell, yeah, you just get to cast the top card of their library without paying mana for it. I mean, you do whiff if it's a land, but if it's not, you just get to play cards off of their deck. Amazing. And let's steal our opponent's Enter the Battlefield triggers with Fairy Artisans. Again, a card I've been throwing in more and more decks because it's so, so good. You just get a token of every creature that enters the battlefield, and yeah, the token goes away when you replace it with a new one, but that doesn't matter because you're getting Enter the Battlefield triggers over and over and over again. The value is insane. Now, something very close to stealing is also copying, and so some people really like to go the copying route in this deck. There is a non-bow. If you're making lots of copies of things and you have a card that makes everything legendary, you could legend rule yourself to death. But honestly, who cares if a few cards conflict in this deck? I'm a big fan of Stolen Identity. You should try it out, it's awesome. Vizier of Many Faces is a pretty recent card that has a lot of lasting value, but I gotta say the best clone, Clever Impersonator, just copies anything, including your opponent's great planeswalkers. But you know, for this deck, thematically, we're talking about legends, we're talking about really interesting interactions. How about Sakashima the Imposter? Sakashima the Imposter is one of the only creatures that can copy a legend because it keeps its name. So it becomes a copy, but it's still Sakashima. And it has a great ability to blue blue return Sakashima the Imposter to its owner's hand. So that means you get to rebuy enter the battlefield effects, especially if you have a lot of mana. I think Sakashima is really cool. And so that's gonna do it for Empress Galena. I created a deck where you just steal things left and right. You steal turns, you steal spells. You're really cagey, you sit back and you play at instant speed. I think that this is a fun, sneaky deck. Now I mentioned this earlier that the price got a little bit out of control. I made my ideal deck with a bunch of Jaces and Empress Galena and Vidalcan Ori and Leyline of Anticipation and it became like a $500 deck. And I really wasn't comfortable with that for something this casual. So that's why I decided to throw Memnarch in and sort of change the deck up. So go ahead and look at tappedout.net in the description below, and you can see the deck that I made that's budget, and you can see the other cards that I might have included that were a little bit expensive. And to be honest, you can play around with it. All of these cards are great for stealing and messing with your opponents, and they create a really fun play experience. So hopefully you liked this introduction to playing your opponent's deck, and I want to thank you for joining me today. My name is Jumbo Commander, and I make all sorts of Commander content. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing, liking, talking to me down below in the comments, but more than anything, thanks for watching. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.